Okay, let's take a look at this photo. Same anatomical region, different subject, different view. Gives us a bit of variation and experience and also helps us to answer some questions that we had uh, from the last image. Because not everything is um, clear from each image. We're going to have to build our knowledge from a, um, a collection of sources. Now, looking for the acromion process on the shoulder blade, you can always look for the uh, break in the outline here on the shoulder, because that's where the trapezius ends and the deltoid begins. So you're going to have something like this. And um, just so you know, I'm looking at these um, bundles of fibers on the deltoid because that tells me that um, that I know that they're a feature of the acromial portion of the deltoid. So it's kind of giving me a clue as to where that attaches. Over here, obviously, in great deal of foreshortening, so we're not seeing as much. This uh, indent showing us the corner of the scapula and then we've got the medial border and then there's always the question of trying to find the bottom of that bone. <clears throat> so we're looking for the armpit and the teres major so it looks like this is our this is our guy. So I'm gonna just choose a different colour for that. Being overlapped by the uh, latissimus dorsi. And then on this side, armpit, egg-like swelling. Next, let's go for the deltoid itself. Looking at the orientation of the arm, there's a slight rotation inwards, which is giving us a um, pretty much perfect back view of the humerus. If you remember that the deltoid is trying to attach roughly halfway down the humerus on the side, but also slightly toward the front, you can see how um, this little overlap here that's kind of trying to reach around to the front we know that from here to here we've got flat tendon which is why we see this particular contour underneath it we're seeing some of the muscles that pad out the scapula the infraspinatus and so on and this muscle is coming around like this. Tucking under the acromial portion with its several bundles. Like so, over here, flat interval, the rear head coming over that trapezius, seeing the attachment to the spine of the scapula, and a fairly simple curve over like that. Take a look at the trapezius coming up and plugging into the base of the skull. Base of the skull is on the level of the base of the nose, cheekbone, ear, and we're getting something like that. 
these two parts of the trapezius, kind of like tubes or cables, there's a section of it twisting over to the front like that. And this um, familiar contour and the attachments to this tenderness sheet. So from the fibers on this portion coming from the skull like that. Fibers from this portion coming like that. And from there pulling at a right angle. And from here they wheel around and we see this V shape coming off of this corner down to around here. Same on this side. <coughs> See a bit more of it here, which helps you find the last bit of this side. So you're seeing how this one is quite bunched up and this one is quite flat. That leaves us with what we would see in here, a bit of the rhomboid. These muscles of the scapula, quite full on this guy. And finally the latissimus dorsi wrapping just over that teres major, thick at this portion of the armpit and also covering the serratus anterior so you get this thicker portion here so we can look at that kind of double curve like this kind of nice rounded area ultimately the muscles coming down to here but this portion of the lower back section of the latissimus dorsi um, is very thin so um, we don't have quite so much to see and what we're going to see underneath is the form instead of the strong muscles of the lower back there's also a uh, distinctive tenderness break in this muscle, like a diamond shape, which affects what fibers we see. And out here, going to get the external oblique and go back into here a second because I just feel like this is not quite right. Um, so I'm coming from here I think this latissimus line is coming a bit more like that. So we're seeing a bit of its, this border can get very firm, very clear. So I'll finish this off by putting in some of these fibers.
kind of um, enjoyable to get in with these. bundles and striations that the deltoid has. Not that you want to overdo them. In an ecorche drawing, you're trying to put in as much as you can. So we do want a, uh, a sense of completeness. And these drawings really don't take that long to do. And they're such a good learning tool. Should become part of your routine and keeping your anatomical knowledge fresh as well because it does kind of <laughs> you can get rusty pretty easily because there's so much to remember right <clears throat> Also, it just reminds you of uh, what each muscle does. It helps you think of the functions, just in how these different elements kind of pull in, in different directions. And other than that as well, importantly, and I think this is something that I certainly didn't realize in the beginning, was that not all the muscle activates every time it's in use. So there's quite a few movements that, for example, the deltoid, where it's only the rear head of the deltoid that's going to be flexing, and the rest will be kind of dormant. And that's going to affect the form because some of it's going to remain kind of, uh, you know, um, kind of flabby and relaxed, and another part of it's going to be super tense and especially with the muscle as complex as the trapezius got many different parts to it and that's where it's really worth reading uh, kind of the more detailed passages in the text of uh, something like Paul Richet's artistic anatomy because all of the information about this is there Okay, nearly done. Now for the um, latissimus dorsi to finish. So we're only really going to get fibres kind of on this portion. Because 
the middle section is fascia. <clears throat> Another thing this is great for is it's for practicing your kind of hatching technique. So that when you're doing shading, your lines can go kind of over the surface of the body. Look at uh, Raphael, all of his shading lines follow the contour of the form they're describing. And you can run those lines in um, any direction. But it's good to know the direction of the fibers because uh, what you find when you're As you know more and more anatomy, in fact, you realize how sensitive we are to that information that it doesn't take much for us psychologically to, to see a body and to understand um, that it's another human being we're looking at. And so if you're doing a really fast drawing and you can put in a few anatomical cues it makes it communicate very, uh, very powerfully and um, economically.